Welcome to another fantastic Love Below You guys. And tonight I have with me the best love coach ever, Byron Jamal. Hey, hey. hey Byron. <laughs> How you doing, T. Great. Thank you so much for having me on today. And oh. a happy Yes, happy new year. It's my pleasure. Look, because I need some coaching. So I get my life together. Everybody got see. Let's go. It's the year for love, okay? So for people who don't know, tell everybody a little bit about your platform and, and what you're out here doing for people. Absolutely. So I am a former pastor turned love coach, which means that I help people at all six phases of their love from singleness and divorce to uh, dating, relationships, marriage, and engagement. And in all of those phases of love, I help people find the most extraordinary part in it so they can walk their love journey with great joy and peace. A lot of what I do is helping uh, either singles or couples really finding their the true love in their lives. I often say that I help ordinary people find extraordinary love. And so that's really the purpose and the goal of my of the work that I do now. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. You know, here on the love below, that's our favorite thing. We we all about we all about the love here. Come on. on this show. That's what we're all about. But <laughs> what I found that was very interesting about what you do is not just in how you help people to find love in relationships, but mm. how you also help them to find it within themselves, which I feel like is paramount, you know what I mean, in reference to even how you're able to function in yes. relationships. Um just going through this journey of everything that, that you've been through, what is the most important aspect of love that you found within yourself? Uh, the, the best part about love within myself that I found is patience. Um, in 1 Corinthians 13, it talks about what love is and love is patient. And that's one of the things that I've realized that I needed to work on most when I was growing up. I was very impatient. I wanted everything to happen when I wanted to happen. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because the more that I help people with love, the more I get more patient with myself because I'm constantly saying, when it's time, it will come. When it's the right moment, it will come. It will come. It will come. It will come. Because that is true. And it's kind of like you when you have a big engagement and you know it's coming up, you you may not be able to sleep the night before. You 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 feel like when is it hurry up and get time for this thing to come. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us get anxiety in those moments. And I, I did too. So learning to be more patient, learning to go with the flow of life and really enjoy the journey is, is what I found to be the biggest thing for my life. That's important. Learning to enjoy the journey. Yes. Um, and so part of that journey, I mean, you mentioned that you have these six phases of love. Um, and those six phases then I feel like bring us to your newest book, Unconditional Love. So how, how does that happen? How do you go from those six phases, whether it's the single, the, the married, the divorced, or what have you, how do you then take that over to Unconditional Love? So at every phase of love, wherever you are on your love journey, self-love is one of the things you have to carry with you. Uh, in fact, it is the basis, the foundation for all of your other relationships. The way we receive love is how we have learned to love ourselves. In fact, you don't even know love until you understand the love within yourself. Because people can give you a 10 love, but if you only know a uh, five self-love level, like if you've only mastered a five self-love level, then the 10 coming at you will never really hit you. I, I often use this analogy of two glasses. If you have somebody that has a, a 10 ounce and they're trying to pour into your five ounce, there's always going to be overflow and you won't right. really receive the fullness of what they're trying to give you. And so what it ends up doing one of two things, you end up either thinking that they're not giving you enough love, right? Because you want 10 love, but right. you feel like all they're giving you is five or, and so that means you can't see the love that they're actually giving you, mm -hmm. or you know that they're giving you amazing love and you're frustrated every day that you can't fully receive it the way you want to. And, and ne neither of those situations is a good outcome for the type of relationships we really want. So learning to level up your self-love levels is what helps you have healthier relationships all around. Okay. So with you being the coach, I mean, is there a, a master plan to this? Is, is, is there a, a game plan to finding love? So if you're spe speaking specifically of finding love with someone else, 
then there are steps and tools you can take to do that. You know, I, I'm working on a new book about dating men right now, and uh, I'm giving six steps to really work through how to date men, how to start with getting their attention, then getting their attraction, mm -hmm. working into gaining their commitment, you know, things like that. So there, there, there's those steps. But I think beyond that, even though I'm writing that book, the reason why I wrote self-love before I even went into dating and relationship stuff in a deeper way is because I realized that relationships will fail, fail. They will fail. And I don't like to use absolutes, but relationships will fail or be extremely traumatic mm -hmm. if self-love is not present in both people. And so the first thing I would say is learning to master the three pillars of love. So the first pillar of love is going to be the love that you find with, uh, it, what I say, inward, inward love. So the first pillar yeah. is inward love. So self-love, the love that you feel for yourself. The next yeah. pillar is upward love. And that's the love that you feel with your source, the, your creator, whatever that yeah. is for you. Finding something that's bigger than you, that you can pull on, that you can lean on, that you can find faith in. And then lastly is the out, outer love, which is the love that we have, that we reflect and bounce back with other people, vibrational love that we exercise each day in interactions throughout the day. And learning to really master those three things, getting each of those three pillars uh, into a place where you feel like you've really done a good job with them, that's when you're, you're sufficient at really having healthy relationships. And a lot of people focus on one or the other, right? So right, I know a lot right. of people that are all about self-love. That's all of it. And they don't, they don't care about, I can do bad all by myself, you know? Right. So their relationships aren't any good. But then you have the person that's always upward and they're in, the, in their Bible and they're in their Quran and they, they are, you know, deep in church and they don't, they, they're mean. They can just be insensitive. They can be judgmental. And they walk home and they still don't love themselves. And then you have right. the other person who's like all into, I want love and I want to love everybody and I'm a caregiver and I treat everybody right. But they, they do that to the detriment of themselves. So mm -hmm. learning all three is how you get a master moving into healthy relationships. So would you say that a person who is not able or, or people in general who aren't able to really encompass all three, do you feel like that's their biggest challenge to find a love even within themselves? Absolutely. I, I'm going to tell you, if you're missing, if you're missing any one of those in a real way, mm -hmm. and I mean on a level six or higher, if you're not at least at a six or higher in each of those areas, there's going to be a deficit in, in one of your relationships. For instance, mm -hmm. if you're missing the upward piece, then when it comes to your relationships, you will, you will try to lean on the other person that, like they're your divine source. You yes. will treat them like they're, they're your end all be all. They, and so you will, you will put on them obligations and expectations they don't deserve. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if you're missing the inner peace, then you're going to always put on people that they need to love you a certain way in order for you to be happy. And mm -hmm. that's dangerous because uh, for somebody to make you happy, there's a level of control that you're giving up over your own life's joy. And so learning to love yourself, now you're able to take that back and, and whatever foolishness they are doing, it doesn't take away your own self-love or self-worth. But also if you're trying to have a relationship and it's all about the relationship, but you haven't really mastered how to love people right and how mm -hmm. to treat people without manipulation and, and other things like that a lot of people use in life, then you will end up having short, good short-term relationships because they will, they will end. People only like being manip manipulated so long before they give up on it. And so, yeah, it, missing any one of those is going to cause failure on some level. Well, right now, I feel like you just spoke a word into my life. <laughs> That's what we're here to do, that. That's what we're here to do. <laughs> so you are also um, a fantastic motivational speaker and a writer, um, and you've written five books. That's amazing. Uh, tell us about your most recent book. Absolutely. So this book that I'm really loving right now is my seven steps to ultimate self-love. I have it right here. That's probably backwards because of my camera, but uh, <laughs> okay. it's the, one with, the only one with my face on it. But the reason why I wrote that, especially with my face on it, was for the self-love piece. I, I had never thought of putting my face on a book. I know a lot of people do it, but I just was like, you know, the content is what I really want people to get. But the seven steps is really about being able to walk all the way through the beginning of finding your self-love to what I call ultimate self-love. And mm -hmm. so what that means and what that looks like 
is I use the creation story as a backdrop. And just to give you a kind of understanding how I use it, I found seven steps that God made to create the world and made us. And in that, it's a reflection of the self-love that we should have within ourselves. So like for step one is acceptance. So for instance, when God stepped into a void and dark world, God did not complain. God did not murmur. God did not start, you know, saying, what's going on over here? Why is it like this, right? God mm -hmm. simply accepted the darkness. And I think a lot of what starts with self-love is accepting what is missing and absent from your life. You know, mm -hmm. it's easy to love what you have. It's easy to love when you got everything you want and, and every right, present is right. true, right? right. But, but being able to accept what you don't have and find peace in it, mm -hmm. being able to really find peace in what did not happen, the love you didn't get as a child, the affirmation, the, mm. the way that your life didn't turn out that you planned, you know, learning to accept the void, the absence, the missing piece is what allows you to move into the next step, which is articulation, being able to speak, let there be light into your life mm. to say in the midst of that darkness, I can speak something different because I accepted what was and learning to accept is the only way to move into articulation in a real and healthy way. So for instance, we have people that will try to speak affirmations, but they haven't accepted what really is. And so they, they don't like the affirmations that aren't working. You know, I don't feel the right. joy. I, you know, I right. don't feel the peace I should feel. What's going on? I was like, well, you, you haven't really accepted the problem. You haven't really accepted why you're speaking the affirmation. You can't say I want a million dollars and you can't accept that you're, you're working with $10 in the bank because mm -hmm. you have to know where you're starting. Every journey starts somewhere. And acceptance is accepting your beginning. It's accepting where you're starting from so you can map to where you're going. And that's why I love these seven steps because they really build on each other to help you literally watch as God creates the earth in the biblical story mm -hmm. and see how you can build your own self-love in the process. So your connection with God is, you know, transparent throughout your works. How do you then handle a person who say they don't have that connection, but they still want to understand how to love? Absolutely. That's that's a great question. I deal with it quite often, actually. A lot of people now in this generation aren't really connected to a, a source at all. They really, mm -hmm. they may call themselves spiritual uh, and whatever that means to them, we, we kind of walk through that a little bit. But for me, understanding something higher than yourself is absolutely essential to understand love. And this is a missing piece in our society today that we really don't grasp hold of. God is love. It says it right in first John, God is love. So to understand love is to understand God and the, the fullness of understanding God, who is love, who is creator. It just means that you're understanding your creator and every creation wants to know the mind of their creator. It, that's why there are manuals and, uh, and and books about when you get something new, it tells you this is how you're supposed to use this thing, mm -hmm. because only the creator knows the true intent and design, the true purpose of something it's created. Uh, yeah. you, you know, th there's a lot of things that honestly I would use as a doorstop. I wouldn't know that it was supposed to be, you know, a paperweight or I wouldn't know right. it's supposed to, you know, whatever. But right. my my mind on it, because I didn't create it, would be different than the creator. And this is why we often don't find true love for ourselves because we haven't dove deeper into who the creator wants us to be. And this is why I link people back to their, their spiritual source because the only way to truly understand the love that you want is to understand the love that made you. Amen. <laughs> that's that's real talk right there, bro. <laughs> Seriously, I, I wasn't I wasn't expecting to receive all this today, but you know, I'm gonna go ahead and get this collection plate and just get the passing right here in my living room. Um, if someone is on the journey mm. and say they could be on their 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 journey to find love within or to find it in another person. What do you think, or, or what do you teach um, is your first step? Mm, the first step to really finding love within is to pause. Um, I, th I think we are doers so much. So often we, you know, we, we're look Googling and we're, you know, looking at articles and we're reading and we wanna go on YouTube and we wanna mm -hmm. find out how to do this, and what's this. 
but sometimes you just got to pause. And in the pausing, it is going within to just sit and listen. You know, some people call that meditation, mm -hmm. um, uh, whatever you, however you identify it. I call it pausing because for me, it just doesn't have a lot of the religious stigmas on it. So just pausing and allowing yourself to be still, allowing yourself to just be with yourself. And how often do we really do that? Like, it's hard to lay in bed and just lay without doing something, you know, checking your phone or, 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 or trying to, you know, watch something on TV. It's hard to just sit mm -hmm. and to just be still and be silent. And in that process, you're able to really realize, you know what, in this moment, I by myself without any other distraction, without any other mm -hmm. tool, not your makeup on, not your hair done, maybe you just got up without brushing your teeth just yet. You know, I am enough. Like I am still valid. I am still okay. I, I am. And, and sometimes we forget to just allow ourselves to be enough without the clothes, you know, without the nice hats, you know, without, you know, without that nice coffee uh, sign behind you, yes. uh, you know, <laughs> without all of that, you know, and, and really yeah. accepting that you are enough as you are. Mm -hmm. That is always my first thing to just have someone pause. I actually do a whole sensory model that's centered around that with my clients that allows them to really get in that mode. And for them, they always have a, a this feeling of complete and utter joy at the end. They're like, this was good, you know, <laughs> like this, like, I need to do this more often. I tell them when, you, when you're my client, so you will, because we're going to do this. Uh, but yes, it, it's it's good to just pause and, and, and accept who you are. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. So sometimes for people, love can be kind of a crutch. Mm -hmm. um, it can be something that you don't necessarily know how it functions in your life, but you just know you need it. You know you got to have it. Um, I talk a lot about sex on my show and sometimes people also use sex as a crutch yeah. um do you feel like in healthy relationships that those two things have to coexist or can you very well have one without having the other yeah you, you know it's um uh, it is true that you can definitely have a healthy happy relationship without sex now the reason why you can is the two people have to be in complete union with that. It has to be something that uh, maybe medically they have something going on. Um, you know, there is something because for me, sex is, is an expression of love, but there mm -hmm. are multiple expressions of love. And in many relationships, all of those expressions aren't always that active. Uh, but people find the ones that work best for them. And so for mm -hmm. one couple, they may need avid amounts of sex in order to validate their relationship and feel like we are still connected. But for other people, a, a gentle walk down the beach, uh, a walk around the neighborhood, walking the dog, uh, somebody just going grocery shopping with their partner allows them to feel that same connection and validation. So I do believe in the health of sex. I do believe that sex is good for two people to consummate especially since it's something that those two people are committing normally in, in most relationships to doing just with one another. And so it does offer a unique opportunity for two people to express their love in a way that's just for them now, mm -hmm. uh, minus all the people they might've had with it before. But going right. forward with that person, it is now that. So I think that's a, a unique opportunity for people to express it. But if there are challenges to it, like I deal with um, some women that don't enjoy sex. I deal mm -hmm. with some men who can't physically have sex. I deal with some um, LGBT couples, uh, LGBTQ couples that have other issues around sex. So they, they get creative, you know, and learning to do that as much as love and relationships are, you have to get creative. You have to get yeah. creative with how you deal with somebody who is completely different than you, thinks different than you, mm -hmm. acts different than you. You like to be super clean and they are not super clean. Learn how to get creative with, with managing emotions and feelings and you know connections. And so it's all right. about creative, creativity and using, and this is why I say go back to God again, using the mind of God to be creative in how you create your relationship. 
because God's creativity is shown in the, in the uniqueness and the diversity of life and how things interact and how, how communities are formed and how ecosystems are created. Learning to be that creative, you know, learning how to build the bed of grass in your life that now can birth trees, that now can support birds, that now, you know, learning to, to do the things that are necessary. Learning that every tree, like your, your, your friend's tree across the street is not mm -hmm. going to look the same as your cactus. Now you, right. you might have a right. desert relationship, they have an oasis relationship, but it, it, right. it's sustainable for both of you. And learning to appreciate that is how you fit sex into a relationship, how you're able to say this works for us or this doesn't. It's just being creative. So one thing that I feel like has happened toward the end of this pandemic is people do now have a better appreciation for those things, for those differences, for you know what brings you together. Um, I think that people are loving differently mm. at the end of it because maybe priorities have now changed. You had a better viewpoint of what's more important. Um, do you think the perception of love has changed following this pandemic? <sighs> Yes, I think more people than ever realize that love and relationships are actually necessary. Um, it was so easy when people were able to go out all the time, hang out with friends, stay busy, have a, a busy calendar, always on the go, 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 you know, moving without really thinking, just doing, 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 on to the next thing, on to the next thing. And to have to sit and to run out of stuff on Netflix and <laughs> that you actually want to watch. Right, right. And to, to, to realize, man, I'm lonely. You know, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not just alone, because alone is fine. Like I mentioned being in the bed by yourself and sitting there pausing, you're alone in that moment, but it's a, you're okay. But when you actually feel lonely, and a lot of people felt lonely, and in that loneliness, people think automatically that's a negative thing. But I think the loneliness it was a signal to a lot of people that relationships matter. Yes. And that it does matter to be around people. It does matter to bounce off the vibration of love and, and engage. Because I often do say this in the building of self-love, you need to be around people because self-love, you reflect love back onto other people. So mm -hmm. you learn to love yourself more when you see the individuality that you and uniqueness that you have in the face of others. Mm -hmm. You learn to say, I'm okay being this way because yeah. they're okay being that way. And you learn more of how to be courageous in your own self-worth when you see other people courageous in theirs. And that is the joy of being around people and being in love, learning love is like air and you can go so long holding your breath but after a while you need some fresh air in order yes. to really really feel alive yes. and, otherwise you're gonna die that's it they missed out on some love Listen, that needs to be know. that that needs to be our joint venture and t-shirts just love or die just L love or die that's it <laughs> <laughs> love or die. Love or die. die. It, it's that it's that serious. Yeah, most yeah. definitely. So this has been fantastic. This has I'm been fantastic. It. I am enjoying it. Um kudos to me for getting this free consultation. <laughs> Come on, let's go for it. I'm here for it. I love it. <laughs> help you help somebody else. Yes, but I want um everybody, all my audience, just to make sure that they have access. Um, your website is phenomenal, but I would like for you to, you know, give them your website, tell them about all these books. Well, I'm going to run down the books. Um, Unlovable, Find a Love in the Midst of the Unlovable, Unlovable Reflections, The Call Path, A Journey to Love, Successful Love, Navigating the Six Phases of Love, and then most recently, The Seven Steps to Ultimate Self-Love. So, you're making waves, you know what I mean, just in the, the realm of helping people and helping people to have a better understanding of love. But I want to make sure that one, everybody buys every single book the man has, okay? <laughs> yeah, get your life together, people. Um, and just make sure that, you know, they have access, know where to find you and know where to follow you. Yes. Well, thank you for that. I, I've really enjoyed being able to put my thoughts into written form because Oftentimes I, I'm able to coach only certain people, so many people in a day. 
and being able to have a book out, have books out there that are able to speak when I can is just a beautiful thing that I thank God for allowing that platform. Now, when it comes to finding me, I'm very easy to find. I'm at byronjamal.com. You can find my free tools on there, more about the work that I do. I have a lot of free resources if you go to to that part. And I even have a community of of love heroes that we just talk about love and share our thoughts and, and, and really help each other. So that's available too. You can find all of that through the website. But if you want to connect with me on social media, it's at Byron Jamal on all major platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. So find me there. I'm easy to find just one handle, one name, one, one uh, URL. So find me and I'll be glad to help you find extraordinary love too. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being on the love below. I truly appreciate it. I appreciate you bringing your fly in here. Okay, brother, we're not going, we're not going to gloss over how fly you are right now. I had to come right for you. I had to come right for you. No, I can't just talk any kind of way. Let me get myself together here. I'm underdressed. But thank you so much. This has been phenomenal. You've touched on so many things that really have, have helped me since I've been sitting here. Um, so I can only imagine what your clients must experience when they sit down with you. I'm sure that it is amazing. Um, so everybody, make sure that you do check out my guest, byronjamal.com. Can't miss it. Um, we'll see you all again soon. This is The Love for Love. It's T. Gray. I'll catch you all on the flip side. Bye. <laughs>